In Mother Russia, faction owns you. That's so bad. I should never do that again. <laughs> What's up, Heroes? Hazard back again with a brand new series for you guys. Uh, we brought back Optic Craft, which is our super cool, super awesome optic gaming factions and other stuff server, but basically just factions. And we've got three cool faction modes here, uh, Jurassic, Roman, and Medieval. And this is a, a baller looking hub. And uh, we're gonna do a quick base tour, kind of like a progress thing, because it's it's been a couple days since the server came up. And I've got Jurgen here, one of, uh, one of our faction members in the Icons faction over here, uh, to kind of walk us through everything that's been happening, because I'm a scrub and I don't help build bases. I just, get my MCMMO up because that's that's how I win the game. What's up, Jargon? Hey, how you doing? All right, let's... <laughs> hey, how you doing? That's it, that's hey, it. You hey, want to hey, plug hey, anything? Hey. I mean, does anyone remember Jargon? He was a... Uh, if you remember this cool little COD team at one point, what were they called? Uh, Impact? Didn't they win some was, championship uh, or something? I think it was called Freako Impact, yeah. if I remember correctly. Didn't they win something? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. There anyway. was like three tournaments in a row in Black Ops 2. Yeah, but only one of them mattered. It was like the yeah. world championships. Anyway, whatever. All right. Well, let's, uh, we're going to start by showing you guys the sugar farm that we got going on. So see you in a sec. All right, what's up, folks? Welcome back. And uh, we're in our cool little sugar farm here. As you can see, it looks like the African savanna out there. Uh, Jurgen, you want to explain? Oh, hey, what's going up on me? I, oh, I'm getting the, uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, herbalism off of this. Yes, MCMMO numbers go up. Ooh. Um, so, Jurgen, you want to explain to everyone what the purpose of this farm is? Like, obviously, for not everyone out there has seen factions or understands, like, why we do some of these things. Well, the purpose of farms and factions is to generally, it's a really cheap way to make money. Some people pick cactus, some people pick pumpkins, but we've decided on sugarcane. So, you just. Break it, get your herbalism up, get even more, and sell it and make money. Now, why did we choose sugar canes over cactus or carrots or anything else? Because, you know, sugar cane's kind of useless for anything other than sugar and exactly. paper. Whereas, like, yeah, carrots we could have used to make potions and stuff, too. That is true. Um, the thing with sugar cane is it's very easy to just run through, break the sugar cane, and it'll regrow itself. Whereas something like wheat or carrots or potatoes you do have to go back and replant it. So it might sell for more, but in the long run, it does take more time. That's fair, but wouldn't something like, I don't know, cactus just be automated and uh, and go down an ice luge? Ice luge? Cactus depends a lot on server TPS, whereas okay. sugarcane seems really stable. Regardless how of how much lag yes. there might be from people doing stuff and uh, it's not that the server is laggy or anything you'll understand here in a couple minutes why TPS has been kind of erratic here at the beginning uh, and most of it's the fault of people like us so you know that's a that's a pretty good segue Jurgen you wanna you wanna let's let's head up to the top uh, and show people what we're doing up there Welcome back. Uh, I'm sorry this, this episode has so many jump cuts, but there's so many things to see. Well, that's really creepy. When I look straight, <laughs> I can't see the beacons, but when I look down just a little bit, the beams show up. It's like lightsabers light, and it's like... Woo -doo, woo -doo. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're up on the roof of our base, and basically our base is down there somewhere amongst all the things. You see it in the glass. Kind of, except that I've got a beams. Bit. There's stuff down there, and we'll check that out here in a little bit. Um, but the reason we brought you up here is because we're doing these things that, uh, what do we call them, full wraps? Uh, yes, wraparounds. Yeah, so let's go check out what we got going on. You'll, you'll notice in the mini-map up in the top right, there are a significant... Oh, hey, hey, before we even get to that, let's, uh, let's talk about these funny-looking walls here and what's going on with them. These are called filters. We uh -huh. have two sets of full block filters and one set of slab filters. Okay. Uh, the purpose of filters is to kind of scare away inexperienced cannoners that might not know how to get through them. All right, all right. Let's let's back up real quick. Uh, okay. So so guys, the whole thing with factions, it's like like playing. Um, I don't even really know what it's like playing. Uh, it's like playing. H1Z1 where you want to raid other people's bases every you know you have your faction it's like your team uh, and then other people 
also have theirs and their bases and you kind of just want to blow everyone else up and steal their stuff that's that's yeah. really the you whole point make, of the game gonna make yours as good as possible and make everyone's else is pretty much terrible so the kicker with that is you can claim land uh, and once you claim land you can't if you're not in that faction or I think allied to that faction uh, you can't build in it, which means or break blocks. So in order to get into someone's base, you have to build these really intricate cannons that shoot TNT, and uh, there there's some pretty hot stuff with those cannons. But what he was talking about was the the when the TNT flies over here and it, it'll hit these filters and it'll get stuck and it'll fall. So an inexper inexperienced cannoner is not going to be able to get their their TNT through this, and they're just going to give up. They're going to be like, oh, screw that. So, that's uh, that's kind of what Jurgen was getting at there. Uh, Jurgen's a really experienced factions player. Uh, he started with us back in like Icons Craft before OptiCraft, and then stuck with us yeah. through all of the different iterations of OptiCraft, and is back from the beginning of the new OptiCraft. And I think you played some stuff in the in the middle there, didn't you? Like Gontroller yeah, and stuff. I played a few other servers like WoodyCraft and Gontroller. Yeah. So, and then. These, these are our walls. You know, you saw some over there and you saw some over here. The nice thing about this is we don't have to, you know, build all these walls, these massive, massive walls uh, out of cobblestone. We used to back in the day, but now we do this. Jurgen, Jurgen, do the honors. Uh, right now, you just pour the lava, and then once the lava runs all the way down to a sponge or bedrock, and you come up here and you pour water. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, go through and break these blocks and you're basically left with a perfect see that guys see that down there it's just cobblestone walls being formed right now now i know what a lot of you are probably thinking it's like oh you made the cobblestone but how come these ones over here still have sandstone set up on them we're about to tell you all about that too because uh as we all know tnt just basic TNT cannot explode in water. So what a lot of people do is they water jacket their walls. And you can see, like this one here is kind of half water jacketed. There's nothing at the top. But there's basically a layer of water right next to the wall so that things can't get over it. So Jurgen, you want to you wanna talk about what we're doing over here? Yeah, the way that we like to water our walls is we like to take water and place it. Just like, like so. This. So it, it'll update and create a very 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 large water source yeah i might not be doing it perfectly but you can kind of get the idea and the goal once this is settled pretty good this is pretty nice right here is you then go through with a pick and you mine out these blocks on each and every wall and like then this. the water comes down and just goes all the way down to bedrock so from sky limit where we're standing here watching a pretty 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 little sunrise all the way down to bedrock down there uh we're, we're basically just building a jacket over these walls and we're not going to do this whole thing right now because we're still in the building stages and we're just not to that point as you can see we're still pouring our our walls over there but this gives you an idea of what's going to go on and we'll update you on the way this looks here in the near future but in the meantime i don't know jordan what do you think you, you should we show them the ground and what this looks like from underneath uh, yeah, let's show them the ground. All right, let's let's let them see the the awe-inspiringness. All right, folks, we're here down on the ground level, and uh, we built our, our our thing our our base in the middle of a desert because now uh, and this is this is a update in one point eight, right, Jurgen? Uh, I think this is a custom thing to Opticraft. Oh, I is it? That's even yes, better. Sandstone. So anywhere in a desert, uh, the entire desert is filled with sand, which you can see here. And then sandstone all the way to bedrock. And it just makes it the easiest to, to basically clear out. You don't have to worry about lava. You don't have to worry about uh, mining, all kinds of random stuff. You don't have to worry about there being things to dig in the middle of uh, stone. <laughs> and stone. Well, I, I blanked on the word stone there for a second. Uh, and, and sandstone breaks exponentially faster. Than, than regular stone does. So it just makes it a lot easier. So building a base here in the desert is just, it's the simplest thing to do, especially since we have world border. Oh, and I didn't want to show you guys that yet. I was trying to hold off, but uh, since I turned to look at where the world border is, I, I guess I gotta, 
got to show you guys the glory. All those, uh, so there's the water jacket we were looking at before. And here's all the lava walls that have been poured. And you'll notice that the lava stops before it hits the sand here. And that's because we have it blocked off with these, uh, these sponges up here. And it gives us control over like where our, our walls are. It also lets us have it as a quote unquote sky base, even though it's not really sky basey. Uh, and then over here, what we were just looking at, and I was really hoping that you'd be able to see it. Uh, we're basically building the Grand Can Canyon. You know, like we're not done and all this underneath us has to get dug out still. Uh, but if we look down there, maybe we'll, be, we'll get lucky. There are people currently right now uh, mining that out. And we were able to see them a second ago. Can't see them now. I'm kind of a little bit sad about that. But there, are, we have faction members down there right now that are digging that out. And they'll dig this all out. Uh, they'll probably dig that a little further. There's some more walls that have to be dug that way and that way. And then one of our sides, or two of our sides, I think, back up into world border. Um, which way is the world border? The world, we're actually on the opposite side. So it's on the other side. We're going on a long journey. Let's go on a long journey. That way, and you guys can see the the scale of our base on our giant journey here and what you we've got here, going on. Finished a lot of these walls on this other side. Yeah, the right there. Underneath with the water and the cobble. And the the water jackets on them. You can see the water in between them, the cobbles done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, fun times, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't get over the fact now that, so this, these right here, these green things that you guys see, that's, it's like a full block. This is dirt, right? It's not just brown anymore. It's, it's dirt. I don't know why it's green, but it trips me out. And if I place that back, it's brown again, but eventually it'll turn to green like it's turning to grass. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and watch it. It just, this is one of the things that very much fascinates me. So, yeah, if you look uh, the right here, you can see this big trench has been dug. All the way around. You can see how much those guys were doing earlier. Actually, I think I dug this side. Did you dig most of this side? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a lot of work. Yeah, it was a pain in the butt. But it got my mining up really fast. That's why if we type here MC top, you see where it says power level 1 through 15. The very first one says you at 6879 because I'm the most powerful person in OptiCraft right now. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last because I'm only going to keep up in that race probably for the first week after that it gets to be insane. Uh, but this this cool looking thing right here is the world border. So basically you can't go through it. Uh, you can't even throw an item through it. It stops and bounces off of it. And people can't be on the other side. So our base backs up right in the world border, which means that we don't have to protect that side of the base as much. So Correct. it becomes less of an issue there. And I think, do we have one or two sides on the world border? We have this world border right here goes all the way through. So it's only one side on world border, but it saves a lot of work. Yeah, it does. Because each one of these sides, I mean, we're talking pff, countless man hours. Like each one of these sides is built by, you know, 10 or 15 different people over the course of, 10 or 15 hours per side just to get to this point and that's not even close to done so it's this place is going to be insane when it's finished and if anyone ever breaks into it i'm going to be so sad because we're going to have to do this again and that's like death <laughs> it's death in the world of factions when you have to rebuild the base it's not like it was a couple of years ago when we were like oh our base got cannoned and then we just rebuilt a new base in like a day or two yeah, now it's like, it's basically like countries. We're in the Cold War now. It's we got the we're we're America and everyone else is Soviet Russia. In Mother Russia, faction owns you. That's so bad. I should never do that again. <laughs> so, uh, man, this is insane. And you still can't see them, but every now and then uh, it renders in, and you can see the bo the blocks exploding, but you can't see the people actually doing it. I wonder if we drop down one block if it'll show it. Come on. Come to Papa. Turn away. Look back. Nope. Well, whatever. You're just gonna have to trust me that it's happening. Either that or I can jump down there and suicide. Nah. Feel the making? <laughs> nah. Actually, I might. How how many blocks down you do you do think? You do have a is? lot of acro. I do have a lot of a You know what? That's a lot of blocks down. But Bonsai. Oh, please. Oh, I lived! Oh, me too. Oh, well. Oh, let me see oh. one of them. Hey, what's up, Chris? How you doing? How you doing, buddy? What's up, homie? 
So he was down here. Uh, this is probably why they weren't exploding. It looks like he's probably ran to the bathroom or something. Um, yeah. So he's just mining this whole thing out, uh, getting a ton of skills for it. I could have sworn when we looked down here earlier, there were two folks down there, but whatever. There might be someone on the other side. Mm, I don't really could know. Be. I, you know what? I don't care that much. Let's go take a look at our uh, at our training area, and then uh, and then the and then the F home, because that's fun. Actually, no. Let's go to the sand wall. F warp, sand, because I want to show you folks something really cool that Jurgen told me today that I had never thought about in my entire life, ever. Everywhere. All right. So this is we were standing right above here a few minutes ago when we were talking, uh, and this is amazing. So I'm going to let Jurgen explain to you what exactly is going on here, but this is so cool. I had never thought of this. I wish I had. It's such a, such a, a cool thing. Okay, Take it away, so Jurgen. The thing with sand is when there's sand stacked on top of each other, once one sand breaks, all the rest falls. So if someone were to shoot TNT and were to cannon this sand wall over here, and this sand falls, it breaks, the redstone also would break like this. So now, if you come all the way over here, you will notice that this redstone current is not activated anymore. And this lamp used to be on. Mm-hmm, this lamp like used this to one. be on. If you set your home here, or set an F warp here, all you have to do is look at these lamps. And you know that if one of these lamps is off, then somehow your sand wall was either cannoned, or a faction member is just trolling you and knocking down your sand wall. Uh, knowing our faction, I would... I, it's a safe bet to say that it's probably 9 times out of 10 going to be someone trolling us. But it's a great early warning system. I'm glad we thought of it. The next step is probably going to be figuring out how to get this redstone current back inside of the F home. So we have, you know, some warning blocks inside and people don't actually have to be up here. But that'll come at a later time. Let's, uh, let's head on over to our, our training zone. It's not much to look at yet, but it's kind of cool. All right, folks, you see here, we've got a... It's basically just a giant, empty space. Uh, it'll get filled in later, but for now, you know, we're kind of in the building stages. We want to make sure we got all our protection up before we worry about making it look all pretty. So we've got this beacon here that's set for strength, uh, jump, and regen. And I know those seem like strange things to have, but we've got this here, which is our, uh, our handy-dandy, trusty trainer for... Um, repair so basically you stand on this and you see on the left hand side of my screen those numbers there that's how much durability is left on my oh tps is really good right now that's how much durability is left on my armor that i'm wearing because i'm in the middle actually in the middle of a uh, training repair so when those get low you'll uh with mcmo repair and the ender chest to open my ender chest real quick and pull out some diamonds so like my pants are looking a little low i can go over here and click on this is an iron block right here and i can repair them using diamonds on the iron block it makes my acro skill go or uh not acro repair skill go up and it also gives you this cool skill called um salvage which uh, i don't really have anything to salvage right now but i'm gonna go ahead and do this anyway so when you come to a gold block Anything that you have, if you salvage on here, it breaks it back into its material components. So if you saw there, I just got myself uh, four diamonds that I had used to repair. So, baller, ender chest. Let's put these bad boys away, and uh, let's talk about what we got in here. We, you know, you've seen the repair area. That's our... Um, our beacon set up right there. One of the reasons is when you stand next to a cactus or stand on a cactus, you're taking a ton of damage, uh, so the regen's good for that. Strength is for this right here. This is basically, we have a chicken farmer in there too. That's, and looks like skeleton. So we've got some, um, some spawners up there. And why is there lava down here? Is that just the I trash can? Lava, yeah, it's just for all the junk that yeah. we want. So basically we have, we have mob spawners down there and you can just sit here and, and kill the mobs as they come down. Get some, uh, some gold, some potatoes, some chicken a bit of MCMMO. and some mcmmo and then inside of this which it's really hard to show uh is an acro trainer you know what i'm gonna go over to there real quick you can stay here okay uh and basically show you what it looks like inside this because i spent a lot of hours inside this acro trainer basically what happens here is uh, acrobatics is how much damage you take when you're falling but you also get a dodge chance when you're in combat so if someone's trying to hit you with a sword you can actually dodge uh, the hit and take no damage to 25%. So basically to train your acrobatics, you just want to fall. So you fall down here, uh, little by little. And my acro is really high now, 
So it's not, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna take any damage on this whole fall. Uh, and you just fall over and over, and then when you get to the bottom of it, you just set a home at the top, and you go back to the top, and you just repeat this over and over. Over and over again, and then you get your acrobatics up. So let me go back over to where Jer Jurgen is, and we'll check out the rest of what's going on in there. doop de doop de doo Go faster. All right. And we're back over here. Uh, you can see Jurgen's kind of standing in this little makeshift pool. We got some folks who uh, who are working on their fishing, so they, they hang out in the pool and get their fishing up. Uh, we've got a lot of folks over here who are really, really focused on alchemy. So we've got some nether wart growing over there. Nether wart, I'm sorry, nether wart growing over there and a bunch of alchemy stands. These are actually all filled like five minutes ago, Jurgen. So someone's actively doing this oh, right now. Were. Um and you know potion mats in here so they're they're making potions and getting the alchemy up you know hundreds at a time um looks like they're building splash healings yeah uh somebody near here is really going to town on some herbalism um we've got some swiftness ones in here and so they're building basically pvp pots fire resistance yeah and so that's, that's essentially what this space is used for right now. All of these individual things will have really cool rooms later, but for right now, well, you know, this is what we got. Um, and we're, we're gonna take you down and show you basically where we live right now um, to our F home. All right, folks, this is literally our home. What's up, Vin? How you doing, boy? What is up with his eyes? They're crazy looking. What the? Anyway. I think he's a blind monk. Yeah. Who? Oh, Vin is uh, on that League of Legends kick, so that could definitely oh, yeah. be real. So basically, this is where we all live right now. Uh, and essentially, all it is 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 just a bunch of chests stacked all over the place. Because, uh, you know, we need places for sand. We need places for buckets, lava buckets and stuff like that. We need to be able to smelt. Um, we needed to get our own enchanting rig set up. Speaking of which, I have 80 levels from fishing, so I should probably use those on some enchants before I end up dying somewhere. Uh, before we had the walls outside, we had to do everything in here, so we were growing our mats, doing all our potions, getting our repair up in here. Um, so we're just, we're in the process of kind of like expanding out a little bit. Somebody built uh, one little fishing hole in here. Uh, yeah, I'm good at fishing, get over it. That's funny. <laughs> It looks like he he just wanted to. You know, I don't I don't even know what's going on here. I don't know why they did that. I don't ask questions. Let me up. Wow, swimming up is still a pain. Um, and that's basically it. That's our that's our F home. The final place we wanted to show you uh, in our and here's a chest. Uh, so the other day I left a whole bunch of armor and pickaxes and stuff out, and I, I put a nice little note on it. It was like free stuff, picks and stuff. You can't read that word right there. Um, it is what it is. Anyway, and now it's turned into another chest that's storing, uh, looks like sandstone. Uh, and then some people have set up, and myself included actually, have set up their own little like chest over here because we all have some stuff. Um, there's a drop shot chest. Anand? I don't even know that person. Bond, Caboose, Nar, Rex, Kyle, Yes, LF, Vin, you know, me. Everyone, not everyone, there's a lot of people. So then you know, like that's my chest. It's got a couple sets of armor, some weapons. Uh, basically these are my kits, the five spawner or creeper eggs and a hopper that I caught fishing are in there. And the last place we're really gonna show you is kind of where I'm spending all, almost all my time right now because I'm still on that MCMO grind. And that's this little fishing room that we've uh, we built out in the middle of not our base. And I shouldn't say that out loud, and I probably shouldn't actually show you because people might decide to go looking for us, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to head over there. Whoops. Home fishing. Uh, and show you what we got going on over there. Sorry about that, guys. I, I know that was a really awkward cut, but I had forgot to set a home at this room and was in this really little shanty town. Uh spot that I had created. So this is basically uh, our little fishing hut that we've created because a lot of us like fishing because you can fish up stuff like hoppers and creeper eggs, both of which are really, really expensive. Um, creeper eggs are expensive because like we had talked about just a little while ago, you can't place blocks or TNT or anything uh, or destroy blocks in someone else's faction, uh, which means that you can't do it in their base. 
But what you can do is spawn eggs in. So you can spawn in a creeper, run up next to it, have it explode next to a bunch of chests, and then you get a bunch of free stuff. Because when you blow up a chest, everything that's in it spills out on the floor. It's just another way to raid that makes it a little bit faster. So this is our little hideaway. Um, in this little chest right here, we've got a whole bunch of boats. Uh, and we kind of just hang out here a lot and, and fish. Um, you know, you cast your reel down there. I don't have my rod with me. It's it's back in my chest in the base. Um, well, at least my, my, my good rod. My amazing rod from the Amazing Race. But that's really kind of the update of what we got going on. There's going to be a ton more content coming at you guys here in the near future. Uh, Hector, Big Optic Hex, wants to record some stuff. Kind of do a learning series for how to play factions. So that's going to be really amazing. Um, highlights from PvP that we do, and most of all, and most importantly, we're gonna have some really, really cool raids with these really complex cannons. Um, one of them that I've heard about that I'm really excited to see is something that they call a nuker cannon, but they, it's from underneath, and they were talking about it, and it's it literally sounded like people talking about astrophysics. And I was just like, huh, what? What, huh? So this is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be super fun to watch and crazy informative for you all. But for me and Jurgen and everyone else uh, in the Icons faction and everyone here on Opticraft, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Leave a like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you did. And you know what? We'll see you freaking later.